Hi there. I'm going to attempt to show you a little bit more about this motorcycle chain. Uh, this is a chain I created back in oh, probably 2004, 2005. I used it on a motorcycle that I created back then and I've sort of kept the file around and evolved it over the years and this is what I've got. So the core of this file is a spline. Let's go to the side view. Let's try to turn well, let's not turn anything off. Let's just go to the point mode. And we can see here that there are a bunch of points. I'll go to wireframe view. And second thought, let's turn some stuff off. So I'm just going to turn all these links off. There we go. So we have a spline. And this spline is editable. You can change it any way you want. Uh, my only suggestion is to try to keep it planar. I wouldn't bend it to the side like that just because, well, chains aren't designed to do that and they don't look very good when that happens. Also, you can get some flipping issues with this file where the some of, some of the links will twist 180 degrees. So, I've got a lot of uh, instanced objects here, but this file really only has two objects, uh, hence all the instances. We have the uh, pin link which is simply my naming convention for the chain link that contains the pins. And then you have the inner link, which again is my naming convention for the links that are on the inside. So this file works if those are the only two objects you have. I, I can delete all of these other instances. And the file will still work. If I hit play, it'll still animate. But it's not really a chain at this point. So what makes this file uh, useful I guess is that all you have to do is fill the chain spline object with uh, instances of these two objects right here and it fills the gap. The reason I opted for uh, using a fill solution like this so I'm just gonna delete a bunch of these so I can show you a little bit more about how it works you see they're all spaced out now I'm going to switch to wireframe view. So they're spaced out. There's there's basically not enough chain to go around. The reason I did it this way, instead of having the uh, file automatically decide how many links should be on a chain of this length, is because one thing that chains can do is, is flex. So in this instance, if you wanted to animate some of these points so the chain flexes a little bit, I decided that there was a point where, well, maybe if you made the spline a little bit longer, a few more links would pop into the equation. I didn't want that. So the way this file works is you have pin link, inner link, pin link, inner link, pin link, inner link, so on. So if you want to add more links, uh, for example, let's say your chain actually had to be a specific shape instead of just being an arbitrary shape like mine is and you had a chain that needed to look like that, roughly. Well, what we've done is we've, we've changed the length of this chain. So now we need to fill the gaps. So this, this is all rigged and you're, you're saying to yourself, okay, this is how long the chain needs to be. Uh, let's, let's make it so it looks better. So we take inner link and up to pin link and I'm just going to control drag and copy a bunch of them. Still needs to be longer. Control drag, copy a bunch of them. Control drag, copy a bunch of them. And that looks a lot closer to what we need. So at this point, we've filled all the gaps. Uh, let's see. Let's zoom in. And we're sort of looking for the center to center. And it looks like it could be a little bit tighter because this. Link doesn't really line up right here, so I'm just going to grab four links. Control drag to copy them. Two more links. Control drag, and that looks pretty good. So at this point, we have a chain that has the right density, and it can be animated without any other changes. No need to animate a bunch of other objects. All you need to do is hit play, and the built in animation plays. And there's your chain. Now, the cool part about this chain is that it does use instances. So just to make my point, I'm going to create a new material. Let's make it bright red. We're going to apply this material to the plates. So there we go. All of our plates have that bright red. 
And likewise, you can modify the existing materials I've given you here. So you can actually stylize your chain, make it whatever color you want, use your fancy uh, reflective or blurry reflection materials on it, and it'll be just fine. You don't have to spend a lot of time reapplying those materials. Uh, the other cool thing is that if you wanted this to be, oh, I don't know, a chainsaw chain, just as, as an example, you can create a cube, put your cube as a child of one of these objects. Uh, I'm just going to zero out its position and its rotation, scale it down a bit. You can already see what's happening. If each of these was a tooth on your chainsaw, you could pretty much create a chainsaw chain. Now what's happening here is we're having some flipping going on. That's actually pretty easy to fix. One of the reasons I didn't include a, a uh, I forgot what it's called, a rail path in this file is because then you'd have to modify tooth two different splines just to get the file to work. So this is actually a good example. All we need to do is take your spline, which you've meticulously placed and are no doubt finished editing at this point, and you go to spline mode. At this point, we can basically duplicate it. So I'm just going to control drag, and I'm going to delete all of its children. So we have a second spline. I'm going to remove the Espresso tag and the material, and I'm going to rename it Rail. So at this point, we can scale it up. It doesn't need to be perfect because it's planar. All it needs to be is outside or inside of the original chain. And we're essentially going to tell all of the objects to point towards that spline. So at this point, we select all of the Align to Spline tags, and we say the rail path is rail. Now at this point they're all facing a strange direction. Um, I'm not actually sure if there's an option for that. So in this case maybe I was wrong. Let's go back a little bit. It's always fun when things happen during a screencast that you haven't rehearsed for. So we're gonna go back to when I duplicated the spline and it was actually the same size and let's move it to the side of the existing spline. I think that'll work a little bit better. It's actually easier because you don't have to scale it. At this point I'm going to select all my line to spline tags and I'm going to drop them in as the rail. This time it works and I don't look silly. So in this case we have this cube and I'm going to do a horrible job at creating a, a chainsaw tooth. So I'm just going to Select the face of this cube. Let's scale it down a little bit, extrude it, scale it down in this direction a little bit, maybe bring it forward so it has that sort of sawtooth shape. Maybe select this loop of edges, bevel them. And at that point, we have something that, you know, you could use that as a, as a chainsaw. I guess under certain circumstances and it's pretty cool but okay let's say you got everything set up but the chain is animating in the wrong direction I'm gonna grab my timeline so well wow, that's a tiny timeline okay so what we have here is we have animation the rail has animation on it we don't actually need that so the chain spline object has a property called progress so in this case that's actually a user data property of the chain spline. I added that as a convenience and essentially it's a percentage. What percentage progress have you made? Zero percent looks like that and as you add more percent the chain rotates around. To make your chain animate you just have to take this progress from zero to a positive number. It will not work if you use a negative number. If you, I've, I've actually prevented it from being a negative number here, but if you do a negative number, it starts to bunch up on itself like a traffic jam or like, like a string of beads. Uh, so you need to go in a positive direction if you want to animate it. So 
question comes up, well, what happens if I have everything set up perfectly and I love the way it looks and it's animating, but I want it to go the other way? That's actually really easy to fix. All you need to do is select your chain spline, select all, and you simply say reverse sequence. At that point, it goes the other way. Now, it looks like I need to reverse the sequence of my rail as well. But once you do that, the chain is going the other way. The links have all flipped around and they're going the other way. Which means if you did a clever little chainsaw tooth like I have, you probably have to rotate that as well. Oh, I've never actually tried to rotate something while it animates. That's tricky. Yeah, so uh, maybe I can stop the animation, move it out a little bit. Yeah, so now I have the, the teeth going in the opposite direction. And that's pretty much all there is to it. This is really just a nice chain file that I had around and I'd used it on several occasions for, for a couple of motorcycles and uh, now you guys can use it too. So let me know if you like the video, if I'm a, uh, if I'm just sort of rambling, I'm not really being useful, I'd like to know about that too. And uh, let me know what you think of the file. Uh, you know, if, if you've purchased it or downloaded it, it's, it's free right now, but maybe I'll charge for it someday if it gets popular, who knows. If you've downloaded it or purchased it, let me know what you think of it, because there are other little widgets like this that I've got laying around, and maybe I'll release some of those too. So, uh, thanks for watching, and until next time. You know, there's one thing I forgot to mention about this file. It's actually kind of cool. So I'm just going to show you that really quickly. Let's get rid of that silly chainsaw tooth that I made. So the most recent model that I used this chain on was a completely hypernerbsed motorcycle. It was all subdivision surfaces, all quads, completely smoothable, even the chain. So when I was creating this particular chain, I created it in such a way where there's enough geometry in here that you can actually put this object in a hypernerbs and it looks pretty good. So I'll show you an example of that right now. All I need to do is create a hypernerbs object and then put my chain in it. And look at that. You got a pretty good looking chain. Smooth. Uh, you can always go in here and add more detail if you want because it's just an instance. So you would just have to modify two different objects and you'd be uh, good to go. So I just wanted to mention that. I'm just going to tag this on the end of the video. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's ready to be subdivided. And uh, I, hope, I hope you guys like that.